Okay, for this video I'll be working through question 2 of the 2016 level 3 mechanics exam. Question 2, rotational motion. Solid cylinder and a hollow cylinder, hollow cylinder with the same shape and mass roll down a slope. Um, state the energy changes that take place as the cylinders roll down the slope. You may assume um, there is negligible heat and sound energy produced. Right, so at the top of the slope, um, they have gravitational potential energy. Um, at the bottom, they have rotational uh, kinetic energy, but they also have linear um, kinetic energy. So we'll just quickly write that down. So gravitational potential energy. I'm going to state the changes as well. So energy is converted to both linear and rotational general kinetic energy kinetic energy there we go, so just double check it, state the energy changes, yep, gravitational to linear and rotational kinetic energy, done <coughs> question B, the hollow uh, cylinder has a radius of 0 0.058 meters, it rolls down the slope, roll, rolls down the slope, reaches a speed of 0.25 meters per second at the bottom, calculate the, rot uh, the rotational inertia of the hollow, hollow cylinder is 0.14 kg meters squared, calculate the rotational in kinetic energy of the hollow cylinder at the bottom of the slope. So right quickly write down the formula for uh, rotational energy. It's a half times the inertia times the angular velocity squared. Um, we have the inertia, it's right here. We don't have the angular velocity, but the angular velocity times the radius is equal to the linear velocity that's given to you in your formula sheet. If we divide both sides by r, so we divide this by r, divide that by r, cancel that out, so we get angular velocity equals normal velocity divided by the radius. So this is not the normal velocity, this is the linear velocity. Um, and I'm just going to substitute that straight in. So I'm going to have half um, I times V over R squared and we have the radius, we have the actual linear velocity this would only be the linear velocity um, if it's not slipping, so we're assuming it's not slipping um, but it doesn't say there so you just, you're just going to have to assume that's the case um, so that's equal to half times 0.140 times um, brackets around this, what's the 0 0.250 squared over 0 0.058 squared bracket equals 1.3005 joules so 3SF, 3SF 3SF again, our answer has to be in 3SF, so we're going to put EK Rotational equals 1.30 joules. Done. Next question. The hollow, the hollow cylinder starts from rest and has an angular acceleration of 1.72 radians per second. Calculate the time it takes to complete the first full rotation. Right, so the angular distance um, it needs to do to do one full rotation. So it's right, the angular distance, which is theta, uh, one full rotation, that's just 2 pi, so that's 360 degrees or 2 pi, um, but because it's in radians, we're going to stick with radians, so we say angular distance is 2 pi, um, it's asking us to find the time, so time equals, I have no idea, um, starts from rest, so that means the initial angular velocity is equal to zero, um, and if you just look on your formula sheet, um, we have the formula angular distance equals angular velocity times time plus half times the angular acceleration t squared 
Let's write the annual acceleration over here is 1.72 radians per second minus 2. Very similar to your level 2 linear um, mechanics. Um, because this is zero, we're going to cross this out. Um, now what we're going to do is some rearranging. So I'm going to move this, I'm going to times both sides by 2. So gets rid of this half. And we get 2 times the angular velocity. I'm going to divide by the acceleration. Divide by the angular acceleration. Let's say it equals t squared. So now I'm going to have square root both sides. So square root t squared over here. Gets rid of the, cancels out the t squared. Equals square root of 2 times angular distance. Divided by the angular acceleration equals square root 2 times 2 pi, I could have written 4 pi but whatever, divided by 1.72 equals 2.7029 seconds, so time is equal to 2.7029 zero seconds. Make sure it's 3SF again. Cool. The solid and the hollow cylinders are both released at the same time from the top of the slope. Explain why the solid cylinder reaches the bottom of the slope first. So first and foremost, I must explain um, this before I start hacking away at, it, at the answer. Um, the what well, if we have our solid or hollow cylinder whatever the rotational inertia of these are um, depends on how fast they roll as long as they they don't even have to be the same weight they just have to be the same radius um, but at the end of the day the, the hollow cylinder has less rotational inertia um, than the so the, no, the solid cylinder has less rotational inertia than the hollow cylinder because more mass is centered around the center of the solid cylinder than the hollow cylinder. Um, I think I'll just start cracking into the answer and then sort of explain it as I go through. So first and foremost, the solid cylinder has less rotational inertia. Rotational inertia um, than the hollow cylinder as its mass let's move this up a bit is closer to the center Center compared to to the hollow cylinder. So from here, I suppose you could just say something with less inertia takes, you know, accelerates or, or takes takes. I don't take less force to accelerate. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. It's going to be a long answer if I try and explain it in terms of inertia. Um, but you can explain things in terms of inertia. Um, a good example of you have um, a car tire and the car's got the rim in it um, versus just the car tire without, without the rim in it. Um, the car tire with the rim is going to have less rotational inertia. It doesn't matter about the mass at all. They can be completely different weights as long as it all depends on the shape. So you can forget about the mass, you can forget about the radius, that all just cancels out. It entirely depends on the shape, which then determines how much rotational inertia something has. Um, but it's probably a bit too much for this video. So we'll just leave it there. But let's, let's just use energy to try and answer our question. So thus the solid cylinder will have less 
rotational kinetic energy, kinetic energy, energy. Um, and I'll put the formula for that just so E K R equals half. So if you've got a small rotational inertia, um, you're going to have less kinetic energy, uh, rotational kinetic energy. Since they both start with the same potential, um, I'll get into that. Since both cylinders So I said, since both on the start the same gravitational potential energy, potential, I don't know about the energy, the solid cylinder with less rotational energy. will have more linear kinetic. Um, there we go. So because it's going to have less rotational energy and the energy that both have are the same to begin with, um, it's going to have more linear kinetic because i.e. E potential gravity, I'm just put subscript gravity equals E kinetic linear plus E kinetic rotational um, so this means solid, I'm going to actually answer the question as well, solid cylinder to read this up a little bit will roll faster and reach the bottom first. Right, here we go. So, that's really a better way to answer it. Um, maybe later I'll go over the inertia sort of component or side of things, but because both have the same energy to begin with, they both have the same gravitational potential because I'm assuming, does it say they're the same weight? Yeah, same shape and same mass are rolled down the slope. Um, but if they said the masses were different, you can actually prove that it has nothing, it doesn't, doesn't change anything whatsoever, so. It's a neat wee thing, but they've said it anyway, and they're the same shape as well. So the same shape um, and mass means the only thing that will be different will be their, their, their inertia, and one's going to have more than the other, which is going to be that the cylinder is going to have more rotational inertia. Um, so it's going to have more um, rotational energy, which means its linear energy is going to be less than the solid cylinder. Right, I think that's it. Yep, and I've said the solid cylinder will roll faster and reach the bottom first. So I've actually answered the question done.